Can you hear that? That's the sound of a distortion on a power grid. That sound is coming from a transformer. Uh, that's just maybe UPS going to some kind of mode or just this whole test. Huh. You can hear the sound coming and going as we go from UPS power to grid power. So seems we've got a bit of a power distribution issue. I'm glad I finally caught that on camera. It's no good. See, when I down the workshop uh, where we've hooked the distortion meter into the power grid, I've just got an AC transformer which is feeding straight into the meter. And as you can see, we're in the 10% distortion range and we're seeing about 4.3, 4 4.4% 4 of uh, total harmonic distortion and noise on the line right now. I've seen it go to just uh, over 5% on a bad day. And normally distortion of a power grid isn't that big of a deal, but the nature of this particular distortion is that uh, it's causing considerable noise to come out of normal mains, transformers and motors. There seems to be quite a bit of uh, just uh, horrible looking stuff. And we can confirm that if we shove a scope probe into the power grid. This is measuring straight out of the grid. We're not even using a transformer, just a 10 times probe into a power grid. And look at all those chunky, high frequency, jagged edges we have going on. That's definitely going to cause some issues. Uh, the reason that we're seeing this distortion is that a, an industry has opened up next doors and uh, they are using some horrible cheap VFDs to drive a shit ton of fans. And uh, every time they turn the fans on, uh, this happens and I can't even stand being up in the office due to the noise. So, how do you solve this? Well, uh, the first thing you do is you go to the, your power company and complain that someone's pushing trash into the grid, which they shouldn't be doing. Uh, the power company did some measurements and they said, oh yeah, we're going to contact them, tell them to stop doing that, it's going to take a couple of years. So, in the short term, the solution looks something like this. This is a rather lucky recent trash find, a Sokomek a UPS, and this is a double conversion UPS. So, the way this thing works is that it is going to constantly uh, be converting the incoming mains into DC, probably storing it in those two giant caps there, and uh, running an inverter to turn that back into AC. So, if we connect this up and plug it up to the grid and do the same experiment, except this time we take a measurement out of this plug, we should see this stuff go away. All right, we've got the UPS hooked into the same parallel. Let's, let's turn it on. If I remember how to do this. There we go. Initializing. And we are online. So let's engage the very safe power outlet. And be very disappointed that we're seeing exactly the same amount of noise coming out of it. Ah, that is a bit of a disappointment. Yeah, but uh, that could have something to do with the fact that we're measuring between ground on the scope and the UPS because I do know for a fact that this is a double conversion UPS. So, uh, we sh <laughs> the actual output is going to be clean, although this does not make for a good demo. But uh, a demo which will work is if we disengage that, rip our safe probe out, grab the transformer 
and shove that in there instead. So before we were seeing about 5% distortion, no 4.3, and now we're seeing 2.5. Like that, yeah. That's on 3% range, so that's going to be about 2.45%. That is a considerable improvement. And just to make sure we're not fooling ourselves, let's uh, put that back to 10%. Grab a transformer and shove that back into the wall. And we are straight back to well over 4% of distortion. So, the UPS certainly is doing its job in actually cleaning the power up. So this is essentially what those uh, uh, horrible expensive audio file power cleaners are supposed to do. They rarely do it, they're just full of moths and chokes really. Uh, but uh, that just leaves us with a couple of issues. Uh, the UPS obviously works, but on its own it is making more noise than the power grid noise on its own. So we either going to have to quiet this thing down or put it somewhere where I can't hear it. And I am questioning the sanity in drilling a hole in the wall just to shove this thing on the, in the other room which is unused uh, just to solve a temporary problem. Uh, but I will have to consider uh, reducing the noise of this thing fan wise is not a big deal because it just takes a standard issue PC fan to run itself. What is more of an issue is the high frequency inverter noise coming out of it, especially under a bit of load. This thing gets somewhat loud from probably those big switching chokes over there, which are entirely out of focus, and the giant transformer. So, hmm. A bit of a pickle, you can't quite quiet this thing down a hundred percent, at least not to my office acceptable standards. Hmm. Bit of a pickle indeed. Alright, I figured out a way to actually show the distortion on the scope. So, we're now viewing the power grid as seen through the monitor output of a 339A distortion analyzer. Uh, we're just measuring the output voltage and then you basically get a buffered output on that connector. So this is what the power grid looks like. So now I'm going to move the transformer from the wall into the output of the UPS, which is running off the wall power. So you will notice uh, a considerable change in the way the waveform looks. That is what's coming out of the UPS much, much cleaner. And to show that this UPS is indeed providing its own sine wave, if we kill the power to the UPS, you'll notice the sine wave doesn't change at all. We just get an incredibly loud beeper going. And the same is true when you plug it back in. It is a very, very clean switchover since the inverter is running 24 hours a day. There you go, that's how an online UPS works. On a side note, I am continually amazed by how many people who just fail to understand the purpose of manufacturer's protective films. That looks so much better. Now, if you're anything like me, you've never heard of Soku Mech before, so let's have a look inside this unison try and gauge what the quality is like because this really is a new brand for me. So the first thing to look at of course is capacitors and for all the high energy applications we do seem to have quality caps we've got to, uh, I think these are Chemicons, they're uh, Chemicons or Nichicons for the main rectifier caps and we've got Rubicons over there for uh, probably battery filtering we, do ha we have what seems to be Tycons for uh, the less critical stuff uh, all around the unit. All the small caps are Tycon. Uh, Tycon aren't necessarily bad. I've seen plenty. Oh, fuck's sake, focus properly. 
I've seen plenty of Tycons uh, last a good long time. They seem to be a step above uh, the cheapest Chinese cabs, but they are not what I would consider high quality. So, I don't think this unit requires a recapping because it sounds decently. It's, it, it, I, I, I think they're decently implemented caps. I don't think they're they're going to be too critical, even if they do go bad. It's just the small ones that are scattered around. So, not really a bad looking unit at all. It's specified for rather high efficiency at 10, 9, up to 93%, and it seems to be doing something like that. I mean, did a quick test. Now look at the interface board. We've got plenty of optocouplers. Big socketed device there. Uh, real looking like a decent quality unit, all uh, multi-layer plated through boards. Wow, look at the isolation slot over there, that's not bad. Uh, this autofocus is not on my side today. And we've got a little budge board there. I don't know what that's for. Is it a fan controller? No. Bit of extra filtering. Someone made a whoopsie. But yeah, real of this thing. Seems to be decent, it's uh, certainly a step above a uh, most cheap unit, it's uh, much better than the mid-end uh, Powerware Eton online UPSs I've been playing with, and I do like the fact that it's got a 24 volt pack for a 1100 VA unit, that is a really nice feature, because that means I can just take the battery pack from my APC 1500, and shove it into this connector because it does support an external battery pack. And just undo this and get a fitting connector and I think I do have one. Not a bad device at all. Okay, this device is winning my heart quickly because these are for battery connectors. And this is a new battery connector. <laughs> I just tacked on, cut out a hole and put an Anderson on there. So this will now hook uh, straight up to my APC battery packs. Uh, I also did cut a hole on the wrong side initially, but never mind that. This is a freebie out of a trash. Who gives a toss? This is Excellent. Now, it is a bit dangerous because these often are live at mains voltage, so one should not go and stick their fingers in there unnecessarily, but uh, never mind. That's going to be a battery connected up anyway. A battery with very taped up terminals, that is. So, uh, I gave this thing a thorough blowjob and it's come out rather clean and nice and even the fence caked in dust. So this thing seems to have seen uh, only quite a light duty. And I think we're really ready to basically put this thing back together and put it in service. I don't see what is preventing us. Alright, and now we are upstairs in the room affectionately called The Mess. And assuredly not because it's got anything to do with marine dining. Uh, this is the room uh, wall to wall with my office. Indeed, my office is right on the other side of there. And I've done some preparations to move uh, the power management stuff, UPS and batteries, and my server in here as well. Uh, so this room is in awful shape. It's, uh, I think this is the original 50s decor, complete with the giant holes in the carpet from God knows what and horrible stains on the lovely 50s uh, wallpaper. Uh, but I have moved a fittingly awful old table up here from the basement and uh, we've got the UPS sitting there. Uh, to get all the wiring through, I've uh, drilled uh, as small a possible hole uh, through the wall that's running straight to the other side and uh, I've covered it up on that side with a power outlet and we've also got uh, a LAN cord coming through. Just a standard Cat5, which is <laughs> rather ugly, just poking out of a power outlet. But it's the simplest possible solution. And uh, it's a rather small hole as well. So uh, when I get around to fixing this room up and the other one more properly as well, I can, this is easily covered up if it is superfluous. But 
I think this might actually be useful since all the power in this house need to be redone anyway. It's it, it's not all that bad a deal. And in the in the Blair Witch project, you can see the new PowerPoint uh, with its LAN cord poking out underneath. Uh, so uh, we need to uh, move uh, this server and the UPS uh, into the other room. So I'm going to have to take everything offline because. Obviously this server was never intended to stick in this room for too long, it was just a temporary place to store it while it was redoing the basement, but uh, uh, it's not fitting in the basement anymore. So it's just uh, ended up pretty much sitting here uh, indefinitely, uh, but it does produce some noise, it does produce a small amount of heat, and it's not something I want to have in my office. Uh, if I am to expand the server and put more drives in it or something, it would be really unacceptably loud in the long term. The UPS we're currently rocking uh, is uh, an APC 1500VA uh, for Gen Smart UPS, which also has a bit of a noise issue and a power consumption issue because those run rather warm. It's also got a very loud fan which kicks in when either the battery is charging or the internal temperature goes too high, uh, which can be quite the annoyance, it tends to stay on for minutes after a power outlet which just uh, almost ruins your day. So the plan really is to put the server and everything in here, uh, all my machines, everything, uh, onto the new Sokomek uh, online UPS. It should be able to handle it since my main editing computer is uh, rather energy efficient, it's not very high end and uh, none of my peripherals really use all that much power when you think about it click and offline we go all right and i think we are ready to go i've done pretty much all the wiring in the office you can see the power outlet uh, going to the other room there uh, which is feeding into the big power strip which is feeding everything and we've got our network coming into a switch which i bothered to wall mount after it having sat there on the floor for god knows how long and we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, I did end up pulling another cord through. Uh, that would be a USB cord which goes to uh, this printer. Uh, that's just a bodgy way of uh, getting it into a network printer rather than something hooking straight into my editing computer. So let's head over to the other room and see what we've got going on. All right. And this is the setup. I've even bothered to bring up a terrible old monitor keep it amazed for the server. Uh, so I have cheated a bit, I have plugged the UPS in just for kicks, it's not turned on yet though. But uh, we've got uh, all the prerequisite wiring done. Power in, and labelled power going out. So this seems to be a two load zone UPS, so I've got the server on zone 1, and the monitor and uh, room outlet on zone 2. And we've got USB going to the server for monitoring. I've got no idea how the application for this Zokomek brand works. So we really are ready to bring everything online. So power button on there. Let's see what happens. And there are the batteries, of course. One of these guys have a, a gotten a bit chubby over time. He's getting slightly round. These are 10 year old batteries so you, know, you can't expect a miracle out of them but I think they're good enough for the time being. They're free. Power on. So we're in bypass, service turning on. I think that means we're ready to go. So let's have our first power outage. So I just want to see how much power all this kit draws. Oh, that is loud, but it did not power off. Let's see what we get. Ah, this power outlet is god awful. 170 watts, but then we are charging the batteries at quite a rate. 200 watts even. Jeez. I think we do have a rather beefy charger in this the UPS sensor it is detecting the batteries as uh, external batteries. Let's just uh, give that a clamp test. See how much current we're sinking. 
Uh, we will zero that out and what do we get? Uh, just 600 milliamps. That's not all that much power into this. That's a bit disappointing. I was seeing about 70 watts with the old UPS, but we could just uh, disconnect these. Ugh. I guess we can't. And to make matters even worse, it seems we haven't even solved the original issue, because just have a listen to this. It seems that the Sokomic UPS, despite being an online UPS, does not have good enough line regulation to actually deal with a varying load of a PC. Uh, without getting ever so slightly varying 8-bit voltage, because I think that's what we're hearing. The voltage is kind of sagging just a bit with the varying load of the computer, and that's making the transformer work harder and lighter in order to keep the voltage charged in the capacitors of the audio gear, making the transformers hum from mere load transients rather than the distortion we're seeing with the industry next doors. However, we are nothing if not resourceful on this channel, so I have already figured out a solution. And if we have a look right there, you can see I've mounted another power outlet. And there's a bit of magic going on with this one. So let's uh, just move uh, the speakers over to that one. Let's see. What the transformers sound like. And as you might be able to hear, they don't make much of a sound at all. So, what's going on? What magic have we endowed this new power outlet with? Well, let's Head over to the other room and have a gander. Because we've created another UPS out of thin air, except this one is ancient and it has a specific feature which relates to the mystical black box next to it. So this box is a relay, it's a slaughtered old UPS uh, and it's just a E12 volt relay which is hooked to my computer. Uh, the input of that uh, box is going to the Sokomet QPS at the moment, taking the noisy, uh, bad, broken, varying sign where we were having issues with, and the output of the box is going to the new inverter. And the thing about this inverter is that uh, it's intended to be UPS. But if you disconnect the battery, it'll, it'll run just fine anyway. So if we disconnect the 12 volt coming from the PC, this box dies nicely. And if we reconnect that, it'll just power on as if nothing happened. It'll tell you it's got bad batteries because indeed it has no batteries, but it'll run as an inverter just fine and just that it turned on and supplied power to my audio gear. And since this is providing power to nothing but the audio gear, there are no considerable transients on the line, which means that this thing will provide a very stable voltage as long as I'm not somehow listening to the most pulsing music in the world and frankly I don't think my small speakers are capable of drawing enough power on their own to cause issues. Whew! <laughs> what a mess this turned into! I was hoping to just be able to use an online UVS and get around the power grid issue but it seems we're gonna need two. However, since uh, we are running this one as an online inverter, which is going to be performing quite efficiently since this actually turns off when I'm not using the main PC. The Sokomek powering everything would of course be on 24-7. Uh, the Sokomek really becomes rather superfluous because uh, it has a rather low 
uh, efficiency compared to a line interactive or offline UPS uh, like the APC it replaced. Uh, since it is running its inverter all the time, it's uh, going to uh, have uh, an efficiency of uh, uh, perhaps 90% at the very most powering these loads. And well, for a server that's drawing about 20 watts sitting around and almost nothing else on 24 hour duty, uh, that becomes a rather major overhead. So frankly, I think the Sokomek, Sokomek, is going to have to go away again. Because it really provides uh, no tangible benefits over the APC in this application. What a shame, I was looking forward to having such a neat solution, but alas, it is not to be. To make things even better, I couldn't get the software for it to work, so I'd be out of a soft power of option as well. Oh, there we go. I think that's going to be a final iteration. Or oh, the <laughs> Netis RTUPS, the Sokomek, uh, sitting sadly in the corner doing nothing. Uh, because uh, the uh, power overhead uh, of it was simply not worth it since it didn't uh, solve the issue. The power overhead of the uh, new inverter is going to be much smaller since it's only active while I'm actually using the computer, which is a small percentage of the day. So I have drawn up a bit of a schematic of all this stuff uh, in order to give you guys a bit of a better overview of what's going on. And this is what I came up with. So we have a divide between the two rooms for the office on the left side and the messy room on the right side. So what we've got going on is we've got dirty distorted power coming from the wall going into the good old APC UBS which is powering the service straight off 24-7 and that's about a 70 watt load. Uh, however from the UBS we're also powering the PC and some other various stuff in the office but uh, the main consumer on that circuit is going to be the PC when it's on. But then the PC in turn is feeding 12 volts back into the relay box and that in turn is activating the inverter whenever the PC is on and that is powering uh, some peripherals, my monitors and above all my audio gear which is making noise if it's powered straight from the mains. So, uh, the reason for this convoluted thing is we lose a lot of idle power consumption. Since all of my peripherals, my monitor power supplies, my audio power supplies, all of that stuff has its power cut completely when the PC is off and I'm not using it. That means all of the little standby power supplies are just uh, not active and I don't have to turn all my audio gear off manually. And that's saving probably. Uh, aside from all my effort turning everything off all the time, a good 10 watts of standby power 24-7. Uh, or about 100 watts of power if I'm just leaving everything on. So, I think that is a rather good solution. I'm happy with this. Sad, I'm sad that the Sokomet solution didn't work out, but hey, that's life. You can't expect too much out of a... 10 year old low end uh, online UPS. It clearly isn't built for audio files. So, there you go. That's about it. I'm going to have to thank you for watching. Cheerio.